Okay, welcome back. Uh, you'll be pleased to know that my children uh, were kind enough to refrain from starting World War Three in uh, in my kitchen, which yay! So I get to go back to doing the uh, art class for another ten minute segment, in which they'll hopefully be nice. Okay, so we're trying to create pretty pictures that look like this grass blade of grass type thing um and at the moment oops wrong thing sorry go over here our best efforts look a little bit like this and i guess to a first approximation a blade of grass or a tree could be thought of as a line but what we were in the process of doing in the last section uh was expanding on this or finding a way to have this thing grow into something more interesting right? so we reorganized our code so that the structure of what we want to do is say create the, the sapling um, and we want to grow from the sapling and then we're going to draw the final uh, results. We then went back over here into our the section of with all of our worker functions um, and we started the process of thinking about what our what this grow from function is going to do. So this is going to be our the worker function that takes one or more segments or branches and um, <clears throat> mutates them or creates from them a new set that can be used to grow the tree a little further. And that was all well and good, um, but you know, you can kind of tell from where I was up to, I was kind of just making stuff up. Like I said, okay, well, I'm going to need to have some rules for how to adjust the angle of, you know, the angle of the thing some rule for adjusting its size and some way of adjusting you know calculating the locations of the points on that basis now I kind of actually have to write those functions so we have a bunch of new helper functions to write the so let's start by thinking about what we're going to call them well we know we know what we're going to call them because I've already started wanting to use them so we'll go adjust scale equals function Okay, and we'll just leave it like that for the moment so that it doesn't do anything. Um, so I'll just go control C and we'll go control V, V, V. So we're going to create these four functions here. So one of them is going to be the adjust angle. One of them is going to be the adjust X and one of them is going to be the adjust Y. So these are the last, these are um, the, the last of our helper functions. There are going to be a set of five helper functions that we need um, and we just have to define them. Okay, so let's have a think through of, about what we need to make these things work. Um, so let's start at the um, scale, since it's the one at the top. Okay. So our adjust function is going to take as input um, a set of scale values, right? So if we go here in our grow from uh, function, it's going to take a bunch of old values for scale. Um, and that's the, the scale is the length of the, the branch. Um, and it's going to create some new values from it. So let's do that by having it go like this. We'll go um, first scale. And then let's say we have uh, as input, let's just have it say all scales. We'll just have a little variable in here um, that uh, what are the possible scale transformations that we might do? So we'll go 0.8. Ah, God, I'm terrible. Okay, there we are. That's where I was. So we might say that it'll be 80% of its the previous size, or it could be 90% of the previous size, or it could be point. It could be 95% of the previous size. That way, we get a bit of variability in the sizes of the branches. So now what we've got is new scale, which will be, what we want to do is we want to take the old scale and multiply it by one of these numbers. So we will sample using the sample function in base R, one of these, one of these values. Conveniently, 
Uh, it's always nice. Last Studio gives me these little pop-up things that tell me what I need to do. X. Okay, so X is going to be the set of possible values uh, for our rescaling factor. Well, that's easy. That's just all scale. So we'll go all scale. And other arguments, size. Now this is slightly tricky. My first thought is going, oh, it could just be size 1. Because, well, I've only got one scale. There's a trap right here. We'll just scroll down and have them think about this grow from function. I'm taking a data frame or a tibble as input and it could have one row, but it could have many rows because the tree as it branches is going to have many possible growing bits. So we want these things here to be vectors, right? We want it to be able to be a full column, not just a single number. So, how many new scale values do we need? It's not one. It's going to be however many input scale values there were. So it has the length of our output, the number of samples, has to be the same as our input. Conveniently, we have a length function that we can use for that. So my function's getting a little long here. So what I might do is just put this part on a new line. Um, and then say, so sample um, is, so x equals all scale, size is just length of the input, which is scale. And then we want to be able to reuse values. So if the first uh, segment gets rescaled to 80% of its size, there's no reason why the second one can't be rescaled uh, to 80% of its size as well. So we're sampling with replacement, not without replacement. So we have to specify replace equals true. So that's that. I'm getting annoyed that the function is getting uh, spreading out. So I will just add some spaces there. And then we will just say that our little, what did I just do? Okay, I think I have somehow turned on the insert. Uh, I don't understand my keyboard. Hold on, I at least know how to do it on this one. So if I go like that, there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't mind me, I totally understand my setup. All right, so we're now in a position that we've got uh, something that says take this input scale, um, multiply uh, that by some rescaling operation that we, is going to work probabilistically using the sample function. So now all we want to, all we have to do is return something to the user, which will be new scale. Okay, seems relatively straightforward, right? We now have a thing that uh, can potentially adjust the scale of um, a of a tree. So let's, um, oh my god, this, this keyboard that I have is set up like the Mac keyboard and um, I keep going, and the problem is that my laptop is using Ubuntu and so I keep acting like I'm on a Mac. Ugh. Okay, I'll stop complaining and do my job. Okay. So we're actually in a position where our um, this part works. We need to now start thinking about the other ones. Okay, how are we going to adjust the angle? Well, pretty much kind of the same thing, right? It's the same sort of operations. So I'm just going to be super lazy and go like this. Copy, scroll down a little bit, paste. Copy and paste can actually be sort of helpful in some contexts. Just don't overdo it. Okay, if we want this to be our function for angle, what we need to do is say, well, what is it going to have as its input? It will take an angle as the input or a vector of possible angles, right? Uh, my, sorry, my computer has decided to freeze. My computer has decided to freeze on me again. Yay, that was great. Okay. Let's go back over here. Now, where we were was going, 
Okay, so it's going to take these vector of angles as inputs. So the set of possible angles. Okay, let's think of our angles as a direction change. Okay, so we might say it could go, what are the possible direction changes? Well, let's for now say minus 10, minus 5, maybe it could stay the same, plus 5, plus 15, plus 20, plus 25. I, I don't know, um, not quite sure where this is going because uh, I'm actually going off script a little bit. Okay, so that's the possible angle uh, changes. So then the new angle will be, we take angle, uh, we take the existing angle, and we're not going to multiply it because we're not scaling the angle, we're adding or subtracting to the angle, so that should be a plus. Um, and then go, so we're sampling from the set of all angles. So copy that, chuck it in there. Okay, the size is going to be the length of angle, not the length of scale, because that's our argument there. Replace equals true. What we need to return is not new scale, but new angle. Okay. So let's have a look. We now have code that will do uh, take a scale, all scale, um, so I've been inconsistent. Uh, let's say oh, this one should be plural length. No, oh, I'm being nitpicky, but I kind of want my internal variables to be named according to the same scheme. So if that one's plural and that one's plural, it makes me feel a little happier. Yeah, I realize that's just that's probably unnecessarily nitpicky, but that's me. Sorry. Okay. We are halfway there. We have two more internal functions to do. Uh, one of them that will adjust our x and another one that will adjust our y. Okay, so how are we going to adjust our x? So it's going to take um, our old x as input, or we'll just say x. So it's going to take an x value as input. Um, or no, actually, let's do it properly. Old x. It'll take old x as input. Um, and now it needs to return what our new uh, value should be. Okay, so this, if we think about it, is already determined, right? We had a segment, and what I've said is, so it's going to start here from our old segment, and we know how long the new one is, and we know what its angle is. So the x and y values should be of this other point. I'm just putting my fingers in funny places now. It's got to be just some just some trigonometry. Some people will remember trig, other people won't. Let's not waste our time by trying to redo high school maths and we'll just pretend that we remember our trig. Um, okay, so to adjust the x-coordinate, we take the old, we're going to say that our new x is going to be the old x, sorry, old x plus, so we're going to take its old location and then we've got to work out the, the um, length along that, uh, of, along the x dimension. That, if you do remember, is cosine. So if we take the cosine of, and finally we get to use our reuse our first function, the angles have to be um, in degrees. So let's just put radians angle. Um, and then we have a problem because this function doesn't take any uh, angle as input, which we can fix by saying, okay, that needs to take angle as an input. And now that I think about it, the length of the line is going to depend on the scale. So actually we should go scale times cosine of radians angle and I guess our function should take a scale as an input too. Okay, so let's go return new x. All of this is kind of like these functions that I've been creating are relatively ugly uh, and it would probably annoy the crap out of me if I had to be writing like all of that stuff inside my mutate statement. So this is one of the advantages of writing in functions is that it keeps the ugliness 
Like it tucks the ugliness into the right places. So now we just have to remember that our um, adjust x function actually needed to ha take uh, angle. Uh, actually, I'm going to use this as an excuse to mention an RStudio trick. If I just hold down Alt and drag up like that, I can have two cursors at once. So that I can now go, it will also take angle as an input and scale as an input. That way I don't actually have to type things twice. So now we've got our adjust x and adjust y functions. They look like they do everything they need, except for the fact that adjust y <laughs> doesn't do anything right now. Oh well, we'll just copy that there. It's always a bit of a judgment call to work out when you want to do a, a copy and oh god, yeah that was silly of me. When you want to do a copy and paste, and when you want to define yet another function. The general rule heuristic is something like the rules of three. If you find that you're copying and pasting the same chunk of code or the same bit of code three times, that's the point where you want a new function. And so far I'm only doing it twice, so I will allow myself the uh, luxury of just copying and pasting. Okay, we're doing this with a y coordinate. Instead of using uh, cosine, we use sine. So new y is old y plus old y plus will just quietly replace cos with sin and return oh my god um, i did it twice return new y okay so now our adjust y function does uh we hope does what we want it to Whew, it's been 16 minutes we've written four five new functions something like four new functions but we now have ah and once again my computer has frozen so i have no idea what this is looking like to you but hopefully this is now um doing something okay um we have most of the ingredients we have all of the ingredients in fact to actually call this grow from function which will then farm out some work to uh, adjust all these adjustment functions uh, which will in some cases farm out some of the work to the radians function and then it'll return some new growth. Cool! So when we go right down to the bottom, we have our grow from uh, thing. So this looks like it's ready to go. It's, it's not quite perfect, but maybe some people have worked out why it's not, but let's just see what happens at this point. And it's probably not a bad time anyway to find out whether or not I've made some terrible, terrible mistake. You know, and like 17 minutes of coding is long enough for me to make a lot of errors. And we have, hmm, okay, something. So it looks like it's done something because we've got a line that comes out as an angle, but it doesn't look very much like a tree. But at least it worked. Apparently, somehow, I managed not to completely screw that up. And I normally am not. I am not normally that good. I was expecting there to be a long section of debugging. Awesome. There is not. Okay, so the one thing that I haven't done is I didn't keep the original sapling, right? What I did in my grow from function, if we just scroll up here, is I took the old growth or the old tips and mutated it into new growth and then returned it. But that meant that if I chucked my sapling, and now I'm just going to rename my variables to be a little bit clearer about what's happening as the input, if I grow this from the sapling, Actually, let's let's be a let's even make this nicer. Let's call this the tips. So our initial growing tips are just the sapling, and so from those growing tips, we will grow uh, some um, new tips. I knew there was a reason I was. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so at the beginning, I'm good at this. Really, I know what I'm doing. Um, we have our tree that consists of a sapling and as it happens that's exactly equivalent to our whole tips right um the, the growing part of the tree is the whole tree so now we go from the old tips let's grow some new tips and what we'll actually do is go tree gets to be grow is equal to 
sorry, we use dplyr and go bind rows, uh, tips, um, sorry, we'll get the old, grab the old tree and just chuck the, the growing tips from them. Okay. So now we go control S to save it, control shift S to source it and, ooh, we have a thing that is growing. Cool. I have, so we're about done um, because it's been 20 minutes now and that's longer than I like these things to be. But let's just for the um, sake of seeing if we can get something a little bit interesting, go like four, we'll have a for loop. So what I'm going to do is just iterate um, this code in this block and go, so for i equals, or well, i is in one to three, which is really just a fancy way of saying, can we just do this three times? So we'll go open that up, close that up. And now what we're going to do is have something that looks like this. Control S to save. Let's have a look at our code now. Our process of growing the tree is going to look like this. We grow the sapling and we're initializing the tree. And then what we're going to do is have this loop. And over these three steps of the loop, every single time we grow from the old tips and make them the new tips, we then have our tree, um, we update our tree so that the new tips are included as part of the tree. And so if we go control shift S, we go, oh, I hit the wrong button, didn't I? Because there is a typo, that's slightly anticlimactic. <laughs> okay, uh, this time, Hey, okay, now we've got something that we can see it growing in segments. In fact, to make, just for the purposes of the video, because it's not quite as clear as it should be, we'll just adjust our um, drawing function to have the points on there as well. So we'll go G on point, um, looks like that, control save and source it. Okay, so now you can actually see where all the points were. This feels like progress. It's been 22 minutes, uh, but we have a thing that is now growing in a loop and it's following this procedure that is randomly changing the angles and scales of things. This feels like it's not the tree that we want, but we are getting a lot closer to the building blocks that we need to have something like that. And so, uh, because remarkably my children have behaved themselves for 22 whole minutes, I'm going to go check on them, give you a break, uh, and uh, come back for the next section afterwards. Okay.